No intro, right? Yeah, no throwing. I'll just. <laughs> Looks like you're about to throw. <sighs> All right. friends yep heavier episode today where we're gonna go off the beaten path a little bit mm. so you might notice the screen behind us is playing uh, normally you would say today would be happy Father's Day but a little different this year unfortunately so, give you some background information on this story and why we're filming this episode. Uh, our father-in-law, Kayla and Amanda's father, has passed away suddenly. Uh, so, we kind of wanted to film an episode in tribute to his life. We don't necessarily have to be somber the whole time. We could tell a few jokes because that was kind of... His tone. Yeah, yeah. He was uh, leading man energy, as Kayla and Amanda wanted to say. All the time. We have the yellow Red Bull over here. Yes, sir. Because that was his favorite drink. Favorite and this is actually hat. his hat. Um, fucking sucks. I know he didn't like me cursing or anything, mm. but... <laughs> this, <laughs> That's what this podcast is all about, really. Yeah, I don't know. Boy, I hope he did, he... did he listen to this podcast? So we actually I talked to his girlfriend, he? Joyce, about this. Yeah. Uh, she wasn't sure if he actually got to listen to the podcast, but what really specifically sucks about this, this year... Is we had talked about bringing him on the Bring podcast, on, right? He would have wanted a podcast. Yeah, actually. we had talked about. And he would have been. Yeah. He would have been electric. Yeah. What a storyteller! We just wouldn't have cursed that episode. Yeah, which would have been a wild ride for us. Hard. It would have been hard. <laughs> so to give the viewers more um, background on who Brett Torpy was, Brett Torpy was 63 years old when he passed away. He was an iron worker for close to 40 years. He was a connector on buildings. Um, he was like everything to uh, so many people. He led a room. He commanded a conversation. He was a wrestler in high school. He wanted to become a veterinarian in college. He dropped out of college to become an iron worker and just fell in love with his passion after that. He mm -hmm. also was in a rock band a in couple, the 80s. And he continued to sing in the church choir. He actually sang at my wedding. Amanda made this beautiful video to him as a tribute. Mm -hmm. We'll probably put it at the end of the podcast or put a link to it so people can watch yeah, it. Yeah, probably a link because it's a little long. I think it's like eight minutes or something. Um, yeah, I just don't know how to do this episode. We were talking about it. Yeah. We have actually filmed episodes before this, mm -hmm. like our normal jovial funny episode. I'm also wearing this Jets t-shirt that he got me because he fucking hated Zach Wilson. Because by Absolutely the <laughs> despised the, like, he thought he was just a little... Uh, his own quote was that he was a schoolyard midget. Because by the time we upload this, it would have been what? I don't know if that's not an okay thing to what say, but <laughs> my father-in-law just died, so I'm a little levity. Would it, would it have been a month by the time this is uploaded? Uh, yeah, is actually sure. almost to the day. So he passed away on May 21st, yeah. and this will air June 19th for Father's Day. So, mm -hmm. yeah, almost a month after the fact, yeah. But so it's still very fresh to all of us. It right? just feels like every day is... I haven't had time to... I was telling Kayla this the other day. Yeah. I really haven't had necessary time to grieve about this. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like everything, every day has been... Like jam-packed with stuff. Jam-packed with, like, logistics yeah. and worrying about, like, physical items that he owned and everything. Mm -hmm. And you never think this when someone dies, that you... You just have to do like paperwork. A lot of it. It's yeah. just like paperwork. It's for like weeks. the last thing that you think about. It's the last thing you want to do. It's the last thing. And you got to do it immediately after. And practicing. you have to get it all done. Yeah. And it terrifies me for like my own parents, hopefully 30 years from now, that yeah. you don't get proper time to actually grieve the moment because yeah. you're in so much, you're in charge of like so many logistics. Like I go to work all day, then I come home and work on stuff. Pertaining situation. to his estate and mm -hmm. everything involving his life. Mm -hmm. And my wife has to do the same. And there's always these constant questions that Kayla gets, Amanda gets from the family. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you doing with this? What are you doing with that? Mm -hmm. And these poor fucking girls like who never got to say goodbye to their things. father because their father passed away in a motorcycle suddenly, accident. Yes, yes. Very suddenly. Mm -hmm. um, they never 
they're grieving with so many so many things that you never think you're going to be in a position and you're never going to get that solace. Like there's so many what ifs now in their brain and they don't get a time to time to work on that. And it fucking mm-hmm. sucks. Yeah. Cause they have to focus on the more time sensitive things. And know. I, and I don't know how it feels for you. Right. Specifically mm-hmm. from the moment he passed okay. away, you say to everyone that they can lean on you. Right. You say that. Well, I don't I'm know. Saying. Did you say it? No. Okay. Well, I'm very fragile. I d- so as a point of reference, my father also died a couple of years ago. Right. So, I mean, Brett to me was a very special person because he showed me. He loves sports, so <laughs> whatever. That was <laughs> apropos. That, that, that's I know. <laughs> whatever. We got to have a Sky little bit of a little bit of choke. Madden, the freaking <laughs> Madden. It's ESPN. He loved it. He loved it. I he remember. loved ESPN. He called into ESPN radio all the time, like every day to <laughs> Bart Scott and Alan yeah, on. I've heard about that. Call them. We but do uh, have to call them on the be, show yeah. too. That'd be hilarious. But uh, so I mean, he showed me that, like a uh, uh, a side of humanity I've never seen before. You know what I mean? Like he was so selfless. You know what I mean? Like uh, after I moved out of New York, he actually uh, took us in, me and Amanda, in for about two months, and that was just a month ago. Well, it'd probably be two months by the time this episode aired. So he ended up dying just a month after we, l- we we had left, and it really sucks. You know what I mean? Like, I really got close with the guy. We were supposed to go fishing. We were supposed to go camping with all these other things. But ironically, he, isn't yeah. it weird the way life works out? If you guys didn't not get kicked out of your apartment in New York City, but if the rent didn't get raised, then you wouldn't have had that extra time before he died. Because you're a man of spirit. You're a man of religion. Like, he was supposed to die on that day, right? Uh, yeah, I, and that's... I've I don't know if I reconcile that. I've I think that's I've tried uh, explaining that to Amanda, and, but it's 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 very hard because of course it's still so new to her and all these things. But it's like, you know, feasible way. It's like when you're born, your book is written. You know what I mean? You can't so that it was always meant. Yeah, you can't right, blame right, right. yourself. You can't right. like if it if it wasn't gonna be this, it was gonna be something else. It's like that movie, uh, and not to make a joke out of it, but like Final Destination. I don't know, joke about it. You know, like Final Destination, where it's like you were meant to die at this moment, but you dodged a bullet, but it's coming after you. You're gonna <laughs> die. <laughs> so if it's not, we're th- gonna get you, if Brett. <laughs> if it's not one thing, it's another, and, and and it's like, well, you talked about how like he had a couple of really close calls with just like. <coughs> random like weird dangerous scenarios i mean think about the now, job that he had right he was an like iron worker he told me he saw multiple people die in the 70s 80s and 90s no, where no there gear. was no harness no, safety. no, no safety. safety like one time a uh, piece of metal shot off hit him in the face that's why he had all false teeth mm. and he fell back onto the building b- onto his back uh, oh, like 10 he, feet and he fell off of a building and onto if his back. and if that, it came it's the same thing if the if the shot to his face came from the other direction he would have just fell 40 stories to his death so it's actually nuts, yeah. There was just so many times in his life, and he was such yeah, a thrill so. seeker because he had this thirst for living when he was alive. Mm-hmm. He was kind of the polar. Op- he was in so many ways like me, but in so many ways not like me. Like I yeah. take the biggest, the path of least resistance in sense of danger. Like I won't do anything that upsets my status quo because I'm so worried about my mortality. And Brett was just a man who lived and did whatever he wanted to do. Now, he had his bad moments and he had times in his life where that didn't work out to his favor. To his favor, but I mean, you can't you can't argue the man was, you know, everyone always likes to play my way, right? Mm-hmm. By Frank Sinatra. Mm-hmm. And so many people don't truly embody that when someone passes away, right? They play right. that song, and it's like, I did it my way in life. Nah, he like no, like Brett, it. literally to the last moment, because it was a constant struggle with him, even on the motorcycle. Kayla and Amanda would say, you're too old to ride a motorcycle. And he would always say, you know, like, I'll be fine. You know, his famous line in this, the one that stands out in this video, is when Leah's hitting him, and he says, you can't hurt steel, baby. You can't hurt steel. <laughs> Because that's truly the way we looked at Brett Torpy. That's the way I think everyone who knew him looked at him. Like, he was indestructible. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It's just the most great. I wake up every single morning, like, all the cliches. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a dream. This is not happening. I think I'm going to snap out of it. So, um, and that this is all not my reality. But then like, when I go to the cemetery, every time, that's a snap to reality. 
like basically when we're home talking about logistics and talking about Brett Torpy's life, there's a weird side of me that is like, we're doing something. He's retired in Florida and he's coming back up north in like a month. But when I go to that gravesite and I see like the flat ground with a few of the flowers and I see the tomb that says Brett C. Torpy, 1957 to 2022. Uh, that's like my snap of reality where I look at, I look at MetLife Stadium because that's where his he's near the burial grounds. I see the World Trade Center. That was something that he worked on as an iron worker. That all culmination of reality for me is always so hard to take in. Yeah. Uh, I don't love, like we've talked about this in prior episodes, like I don't like the cemetery. And we even, ironically, the episode that aired right after he died mm -hmm. was an episode where we were talking about, about like, do you believe in like dying. going to the cemetery because it's just a bag of bones and yeah. we honored him in the way he lived. And you said it's for the living, and that is so true because mm -hmm. that cemetery is just there to heal everyone yeah, around him. Yeah, like, when I go there, I've gone there a couple mornings by myself mm -hmm. when I've go gone to pick up stuff in Lyndhurst at my parents' house. Uh, I'll just take a swing by. Like, when I bought the new car, I show showed him the new car because mm -hmm. he always used to make fun of my car. And that was just, like, a quick five-minute thing where I think it helped me it was mm -hmm. helping me heal that morning. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's something. There's some. There really is something mean. about like going to a cemetery. Like, obviously, it's not an anybody's favorite activity. But like, a um, couple months ago, m my dad wanted to go visit his mom's gravesite in Jersey City, and like middle of Jersey City, like busy, crazy city, um, lots of people, and then you're in the cemetery, and it really feels like there's nothing around you, and it exactly what Leandro like said. Time stops. It's yeah. It's for the it's for the living, and it's there for you to like feel a sense of like not like tranquility. I guess is the best way mm -hmm. to put it, but also like it's, it's like un it's like your alone time with the person that you like miss. It's unnerving tranquility, though. Yeah. It's like the most tranquil yet uh, hostile environment right. in like, like again. We were in the middle of Jersey City, and you can see like all the high rise apartments around you. You bark at them a little. No, not this time. No, that was that was pre Bark Boys. <laughs> that was pre Bark Boys. Um, yeah. but like you know, you're in the middle of the city, but you can't like hear anything around you. It's just like you and the grave and like whoever you're with at the time, and it's a, it's a weird thing. Mm -hmm. So I guess, how do you move forward? Like, how have you been moving forward these past couple of weeks? Because, so after my grandfather died in 2012, this is the one one thing I I wanted to bring up. Mm -hmm. People always say time heals all wounds, and I've always said, like, fuck that. That's bullshit. Mm -hmm. Because my grandfather passing away, albeit he was older, it was not sudden, I had my time with him, it truly affected me in my life because it meant a lot. My grandfather meant a lot to me. I spent every single day as a child at his house, um, and he was a second father figure to, to me. And I've talked, I've long talked about uh, my father's mortality and how that would mm -hmm. fuck me up. Never in any of these situations has time necessarily he hel uh, healed the wound with my grandfather. I haven't coped with it better. Like I still randomly cry about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know how to reconcile this specific death because of the sudden nature to it, the person he was, how much he meant to his daughters, how much he meant to people around him mm -hmm. and just... Mm -hmm the fragile nature to life, even to the strongest people. It's something I, I tell Kayla, like, fuck that. I'm not going to lie to you. You're too smart. Like time won't heal this wound. Mm -hmm. Like that's your father. Nobody's ever going to replace this moment. I mean, that's the way, like, what are you saying that that's what she, um, no, I just don't know how to take it from here. So. And nobody, I know nobody's expecting me to have those answers. I think all you can do right now is just take it in. Um, I don't want to. You will see. It's something you have to, though. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want to pay bills. You don't want to, you know, go wake up, go to work. But you have to. I mean, only time. Like, time. I'm not saying that time is going to lead to a place where you're okay with it. But time is going to lessen it up. You have to realize that. It just numbs you. I don't think it lessens it. I yeah. think that a anyone that Brett touched has a piece of a minute. You know what I mean? Gross. Piece of him in it. <laughs> And not, not yeah, like Brett. skin on skin. <laughs> My man. And not on skin on skin. <laughs> Bready, <laughs> Bready yeah. boy. Because um, like, like all his girls are him. You know what I mean? And that's what they have to realize is that Brett is still here. Each of them, l like you said at his funeral, really encompasses 
one of his cornerstones. And, and in his case, he only has three cornerstones, I guess. Or maybe the fourth one is religion, and none of them are very religious. But I can see Brett in Kayla. I can see Brett in Leah. I can see Brett in Amanda every day. And just like you said, each one of them have a facet of Brett, and they will re- recognize that. You know, eventually you can stare at yourself and see that you are the next step after Brett. You know what I mean? And it sucks because I had, like, my father died, but I had multiple years. And my biggest regret is the fact that I didn't really appreciate those couple of years. You know what I mean? Even he who was sick, I thought, I have more time. I have more time. And then before you know it, your father is a shell of that man. You know what I mean? Um, I think, like, everybody kind of thinks they have more time with no matter who it is that dies. Exactly. Even, like, your grandpa who was in old age, like, yeah. I think you always just assume that you have more time and at the end of the day, like, you just really don't. Yeah. That's why I don't do and well. It's almost like every every extra day that you get is just kind of like an added bonus to what you what you expect that you're going to get. Mm-hmm. In life. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh... How have you... How has it affected your life with your parents since you like found out? Because you have a very close relationship with your parents, but have you ever taken a step back when you've gotten a phone call from your dad or your mom and you're just like found out what about about, about Brett Brett passing? Oh, 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 and like my relationship has it with my like r- reset anything? No, because I I know you're so close to your parents. I, like you treat them fantastic I to begin with. I'm incredibly close to my parents. So let's. Let's take the Coldplay concert that you just went to, mm. and Bruce walked out. Yeah, that special no, moment that you like. Was there I didn't any? Know the Coldplay concert. <laughs> was there any side know. of that where you got to internalize like how special that was? Uh, yeah, but I don't uh, like nothing against the situation. But yeah, like, yeah, you weren't uh, thinking Brett, of Brett. Brett, I'd, uh, like that would have happened regardless of you know what happened here. Um, but you no, know, it, it absolutely p- uh, went through my mind because I stood there and I realized that like. I've been to a Bruce concert like with my mom. I've been my parents have been to plenty of Bruce concerts together. But and again, so Leandro, I don't know if I, you knew this, but like both of my parents are huge Bruce Springsteen fans. Like biggest. Well, I saw that on your Instagram post. Yeah, like humongous, humongous Bruce Springsteen fans, and I, I likewise have become one because of that. Um, and when he came out at the concert, like it did click in my head at that moment that like I might never get this moment again where I'm like at. A live concert where Bruce Springsteen is there, whether it's his concert or somebody else's concert, and it it did like make me kind of well up a little bit just because I'm like, you know, this is something that has been thirty something years in the making, like. Y- and you know what I was thinking about that? I always think about those pure moments. I call them pure moments. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. You're in the moment right now, and I feel like after my father died, I lost that feeling, mm-hmm. you know, of a pure moment where it's just. You, it's like, j- like, it's h- so hard for me today not to think of my surroundings. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I very rarely am in a in a instance where I'm not thinking about what the other people around me think. Mm-hmm. Um, and and when I do very rarely have those moments, they feel great. You know? Do you get those pure moments? Like, has that reset your relationship with your mom at all? No. Uh, I d- I mean, I think pure moments in any instance, like by yourself or with your parents or whatever. I don't. I, I I mean, I don't like know what's what a, mo- would be a what's pure a mo- what's a pure moment that stands out to you and with you and Brett, if there's anything. Jack, reset uh, the video. It's it's actually I feel like I had so many pure like he's such a pure person, you know what I mean, and that's what made it so hard his death, you know what I mean, like just anything he would say was just he was just so happy to talk about it, you know, like he did have like a passion. So I always think of. What are you passionate about in life? And there, there's so many of these videos where he talks about just like toilet paper. And he had just this bleeding passion for and conviction for anything toilet he paper. was in the moment about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What'd you say? Toilet paper. Yeah, toilet paper. No, um, he, from, again, I obviously you guys have a ton more experience with him. But the few times that I had met him over the course of years, like like you're saying, he just... If he got on a topic, like he was going to, like drill that topic until somebody gave up, and it wasn't going to be him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and big time. Al- and I would just listen. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, you know what? He was po- very much like a, the so dad like of this dads. This moment, this moment is something that sticks out to me mm-hmm. because he whispers into my ear in that moment, and what he said to me. That's gonna make me cry. I don't. What he I'm said. Already on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> what he said to me was take care of her. Yeah. So I keep replaying that moment. Uh, a lot since he passed away, mm-hmm. and 
I'm just trying to, like, there's so many parts of the future where I'm worried about oh, how yeah. I can take <laughs> care of her, you know? How I can how I can handle this situation. Uh-huh. Because I feel like inst- instinctually embedded in me right now that I owe it to this man to to do that but i don't know how to do that you besides also, just be there you also kind of like just had that in you from the start like with kayla because as long as i've known you and super protective as long her. as i've known you you've been with kayla yes like, period yeah and that, there is no that, like abby without kayla in your right, in, in your in life in my world and yes. same with leandro but also like yeah. i've known you for what Way longer. over a decade now right yeah is it like 15 14 years yeah holy shit yeah um so like ever what? since I've known you, that's crazy. Fourteen yeah. years. That's nuts. You met in college. Yeah, our first year of college. Freshman but, year of college. Um, I mean, Kayla, we're only dating for like ago? seven months at that time. The fuck, I was fourteen when you guys <laughs> met. <laughs> I mean, we were only seventeen and eighteen. Oh, um, <laughs> but yeah, ever since like <laughs> that's ma- th- that's how time works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I was that yeah, young. Like such a young. <laughs> I was playing um, Minecraft. But ever since, like, I've known you, like, th- it's been very clear, that, like, the a level of care and, like, love that you have for Kayla. So Super protective over her. Like, that Mark story where yeah. he was making noise and I told him to shut up. Uh-huh. And but it wasn't, it's not even just that. It's just, like, a very, like, clear and, v- like, valid understanding that, like, you know, Abby cares about this person way more than he cares about, like, almost anybody on the planet. And I don't think that, like... Obviously, it's not going to change anytime soon, and I don't think that this changes anything. I think, like, if anything, it does give you that extra sense of, like, I'm going to take care of this person till the death of me. Like, um, but also, you were going to do that anyway. Like, it's but just it worries built into you. It's instinct. So I'm already worried about my own mortality. And the one thing I always tell Kayla is, I'm there for her. Right? Mm-hmm. What happens if I'm not? Like, I know that's a crazy thing to yeah. say, but I think of what happens if one day I. You know, she Something wakes up and I'm not here. Like, yeah. not that I lied to her I can't because know. I can't control that necessarily. It'll but again, if it's like till death do us part, like you, you are going to go out eventually knowing that you did like everything that you could have. I guess. But you always you always play that second guessing game. Like, I'm sure Leandro was a great son to his father. And now he's just he's replaying like minute, moments, stupid yeah. things. Mm-hmm. And the girls obviously did that when their father passed. Mm. Kayla said she rushed him off the phone that day. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, but you took the phone call. Well, you saw like yeah. you saw the text that I, I sent to Kayla and you saw what I said to Kayla. Like, you know, it's it's impossible to think that way because like you are literally like everything that a father can ask of their daughter to right. be and do and become and whatever, all this stuff. And um yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to tell somebody not to think that way, but also, like, you really have to w- just chop at it to, like, make sure that you know... So what's something, I guess... You know What is something Amanda's talked about in the future that's hard for her, besides, like, her dad just n- not being here physically? Like, what's a big worry for her? Like, what is something that stands out? Because think I'll tell you for Kayla... Sorry. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you for Kayla, <laughs> in lieu of my father-in-law, I'm going to speak over you. Mm-hmm. Um... Something for Kayla that she brought up that broke my heart was the bad times are going to be bad, but what hurts me the most is the good times are not going to be as great. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, without him there. I think um, it's like with that terrible card, right? No, we won't mention it, but <laughs> it's like not no longer having a person that you can just call on, someone that loves you at a level that no one else can. You know what I mean? Like I I don't know how much you love Amanda Abby, but not no as much no as no matter what, right. It's like that's his daughter and you don't have that. And it's like you you could see yourself with Kayla forever, but it's like let's say something does happen, knock on wood, you know, for it to not happen where you guys split up, right? I I don't think many people would still be willing to help people in that family after you split up. You feel me? So it's like, so <laughs> right now, right now she can rely on you. And I fully believe I can rely on you and she can rely on you for anything. But if said, said something happens, it's not a guarantee that you'll be there. Same with me. It's not yeah, a guarantee. Yeah, and for a father, but you he can't He would be just there no matter what. Like, this dude would. 
he would like take a flight across the world yeah. to help you. Like if we lived in Japan or some shit. I'll tell you how my my mom has responded because my aunt died last year, right? right. And I was uh, obviously like incredibly and close to my aunt. Not only like, her sister was her best friend. In the it world. was yeah, it was her it was her baby sister. She was her, my mom. How many was years a, apart? Uh. I want to say like eight or something like oh, that. Oh, is that much? Yeah. Okay. My mom's the oldest. My aunt was the youngest. And she was my godmother. And like I spent all my summers there growing up. That's like the close, the family that I'm closest with. Um, but obviously my mom is like, it was her best friend. It was her sister. Like literally best friend. Um, and the way she's kind of responded to things. My mom's a very emotional person. She obviously grieved a lot over everything. Um, but in the moment, going back to the concert when Springsteen came out, the, what she told my cousins, my was aunt, her sister. Sorry, was her sister a Bruce Springsteen fan too? Yes, huge okay. Bruce Springsteen fan. What my mom said to my cousins when she told them like what happened, um, she was like, you know, your your mom sent me a gift at the at the uh-huh. concert, and I think that's like a good way to approach it. That like all these good things that happen are like a sign from you know your loved ones that have passed that like. They're watching out for you, and you know, I'm gonna play cynical Abby. Yeah, that's just because I, that's I would do that if anyone else told me this story and I wasn't so close to it. Mm-hmm. It's like, aren't you just finding ways to cope with death, and that's well, not necessarily like a sign. Like you're coping. You're assigning. You're assigning these symbols mm-hmm. of someone past their death. But to you know, borrow from things that Leandro said before, who's to say that that's wrong? That the song oh yeah, yeah no, like I know. If if that's the way you cope, and that's what's going to make you happy in that moment, and that's what's going to help you, because you know, the, I'm pr- I'm sure there's parts of my mom that were thinking to herself like, man, I wish my sister was here to see this. Um, but if she's saying to herself, you know, this is a sign. This was a gift from her. She sent Bruce out tonight to, you know, make me happy. Then if that's what's going to make you happy in that moment, and that's what's going to help you cope with that feeling of I wish she was here then exactly I agree with that you know what's one of the scariest things for me you know how like when people are hanging out with like me hanging out with Jack me hanging out with you I pick up aneurysm what is it mannerisms aneurysms not aneurysms I hope I'm I'm not giving you aneurysms god God damn brother (laughs) oh my brain (laughs) anyway um, I pick up mannerisms (laughs) from you guys right like I you know you can't help but to act like said person and it's scary to know that I picked up mannerisms from Brett, right? But like all things, like time goes on, you know, like memories are going to be lost mm. and um, mannerisms are going to get lost. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just it, like you want to live up to him, mm. right? But it's like, who are you going to be 30, da- 30 years down the line? And you know what I mean? You know what bothers like me? You want to live up to, to yeah. who he was, but it's like time... like. You you, like right now we're, we're we're emotional we're passionate about it we're we're really gung ho but it's like but are you gonna keep doing ten that? years from now five yeah. years and th- that's what's scary you know like I do want to be a person that he'll be happy of but mm. would you put as much energy into it now that's, uh, that's so the but way there's been a sorry so there's been a lot of times in this process over the past couple weeks though that you've you've been very upset right with this whole situation yes um in those moments was there any time where you were just like i gotta do things a little differently here like how did that affect you in this in these past few weeks right to put your own grieving aside have you been able to do that or has it overcome you because i know you suffer with more anxiety than i do i think um there were a couple of moments um, but I don't, you know, like, and that's why I would have to excuse myself. Right, right. You know what I mean? Because I, like, I can compartmentalize it, but it's one of those things where it's like, I want to feel this right now. I think he deserves for me to feel for him. You but know? don't you think, and I'm just saying this as Jack's restarting the video. Yep. <laughs> um, I, I personally felt in these past two or three weeks that's that fine. the best way to honor so you got to take it from me, that yeah, like yeah, yeah. as someone who spent more time with my father-in-law than you did. Yeah, overall, not saying yeah. I knew him better. Yeah, yeah, yeah I feel you. I feel but you. I just have more time and mm-hmm, more occasions mm-hmm, with him. Of course, you feel me. You feel me. Yeah, I feel you. That <laughs> the best way to honor him yeah. necessarily was to put your own 
like grief aside. I'm not saying you did anything wrong, but I'm saying I think there's times and you'll see this throughout life, Leandro. And I think this comes with like my advice to you Mm -hmm. as someone who's been married or been in a relationship for 14 years is that it's not a it sucks. It's just not about you in these moments. And I know that's really hard when you have anxiety. I don't I don't have anxiety. Right. Yeah. So I don't. I don't suffer from something. And also, my father didn't pass away. So I, I'm not triggering these post-traumatic flashbacks yeah. because I, I'm sure that you're dealing with something that I can't imagine. Uh-huh. Um, but you have to try. Like You have to be more cognizant in these situations that, that your life... like you, When Brett died, right, he mm-hmm. knew you loved Amanda. Mm-hmm. That's one thing he knew, regardless of how he thought about you, regardless if he thought I was a fat fuck, mm-hmm. regardless if he thought mm-hmm. you needed to get a better job, mm-hmm. regardless if he thought I needed to work harder, regardless if he thought Dean was never going to make it as a singer, right? Mm-hmm. Regardless of those thoughts. As a singer. <laughs> no, no, but those are serious things. Yeah. Like, regardless of those thoughts, he did know at the time of his passing that you loved his daughter. He knew that I loved his daughter. Mm-hmm. I really do believe that. He knew that uh, Dean loved his daughter. And the best way to honor that is to be cognizant in these situations with your significant other Yeah. and put your own ego aside and just go above and beyond. Whenever you think you're not doing enough, do more. It's 10 a.m. See, and that's so up. funny because this is the way, like... You know, so by the time I get to you, I'm just giving you the bridge, like, ah, this motherfucker didn't want to do this. But Life reality, is... It's a lot perception more. from the outside is not reality a lot well, of times my father-in-law faced that in his life like this is a good bridge to him in saying that if you heard different stories about my father-in-law we're not going to go into them from different people can, yeah. that you're not going to get the f- picture that we have mm-hmm. right and we have in a sense obviously overly canonized this person because he's at the end of the day still a man mm-hmm. but that's just a very interesting dichotomy because for me, from from that situation, mm-hmm. I gained a little like I was just a because you got a I'm in a unique position with you and I will be for the rest of your life mm-hmm. because I have love for you mm-hmm. as a co-host and I have love for you as a future brother in law. Mm-hmm. But you got to remember, like I'm treating Amanda as now now that her father is has passed away as an extension, like I'm trying to protect her like her father would. And I have to treat her as like a little sister because I've mm-hmm. known Amanda like since she was 10 years old, more, right? I would, more than no, not 10 years old. She was 12, 13. For a majority of her life, like 80%. Not a majority, life, but really. I saw her develop. And I, I'm not as close to L- Amanda as you are, and I'll never have the love for her that you will have mm-hmm. or that Brett had. But I come from a different vantage point where there's going to be like, there's times I'm going to get frustrated with you because I have to look at as a, Amanda as like, my own sister. You know what I'm that's saying? That's okay. Yeah. I'm so I, I, I and I think that's a thing I, it's like a big I got brother, used to. Like a big brother type of thing. That's a thing I, mean? I got used to with Brett where I knew he, <laughs> we were looking back in text messages. This is kind of funny. We were looking back in text man- messages to take solace in conversations that I had with my father-in-law mm-hmm. because the girls were doing that with their own father. It was like, you know, I love you and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. For me and him, it was just pure fighting because <laughs> it was pure fighting about the Jets, stupid things. And, Literally, one of the text messages I have from him mm-hmm. is that he's going to punch me in the face if I pick up Jack, uh, Leandro one more time and don't say hi to him. <laughs> like, that was the type of guy <laughs> I understood of respect. Mm-hmm. And I, he was, like, we knew the ground of, yes, he's my father-in-law. Yes, maybe he had love for me. Maybe he didn't. But that he was always going to tell me how it was and do whatever it took to protect the people around him Mm -hmm. and that I would never be able to jump that circle. You know what I'm saying? So that's, it's going to be weird for me and you for the rest of our lives. Like I'm always going to take Amanda's side. I think it's going to be weird for you, not for me. I mean, oh, okay, I that's think fair. That's I think fair. You're logical, but I'm saying, though. like, I think if Amanda logical. cheats on you or does something heinous and treats you like shit, I'm still gonna take her side because that's whoa, Amanda. Whoa, 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 Okay, okay, okay. You gotta elaborate on that because there's a difference between taking her side because ultimately because she's I'm your sister, I'm always gonna be there for Amanda. But you gotta hold her responsible for that. A hundred percent. Okay, a hundred percent. But in you're that gonna sense you're on my side. But you're gonna feel betrayed because I'm you're not gonna, gonna feel betrayed. You will because. I guarantee you, if that situation arises, you're going to be like, no. why is Abby still talking to Amanda? To you, why though. is Abby no, no, still no. like supporting Amanda? Why is Abby helping Amanda move no, out no. of my house? You have to see it this way. No, what the fuck? What are you, crazy? This is the thing, I don't right? Know. You might take I it I understand away. how 
people work, how this works. I know Amanda. Be- I know you because of Amanda. Right. Your loyalty ultimately is Will in always Amanda. be to Amanda, it's especially on Amanda. behalf of Brett. So it's not like you're my bro, like be- like you two. You know what I mean? Like if Amanda's a douchebag to Jack for some reason, <laughs> for no reason, I'm pretty sure you'll be like Amanda. What the fuck? You're not gonna be on her side unanimously just because you feel like you owe it to her. But like if it's between me and Amanda, obviously your loyalty is with Amanda, yeah. and I don't think anything ever will change that fact. I mean, it'll probably change your approach, say, 10 years down the line. For sure. And we've hung out. We've gone on vacations, done this, and the third. You've been on my yacht, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> you know, you may, be, like, you may not be as passionate as, it, as you would be today, but you would be wh- wh- on her side, and I don't blame you. Same way okay. where I'd pr- – eh, I don't know if I'd be on Kayla's side versus your side, but – that's because I feel like I'm closer to you. But ultimately, Kayla. if me and Kayla... I'll Kay- whip your ass, though, if, if you do <laughs> right, something right. to her, though. But some ultimately, if something happens to me and Kayla, you have to support Amanda and her family. Absolutely. So you're going to be a Absolutely. Team Kayla. But I'm going to be logical about it. I'm not going to let people shit of on course. you of just course. because something happened. If I got both sides of the story because we brought it up on the podcast... I, I'm gonna have to keep a G with everybody, you know. Like I'm not gonna let them just <laughs> keep a hood. So it. to reel it back in, yeah, uh, yes, because we went a little tangent. We can't. We tangential. went on a little tangent. But that's what my father-in-law would have done. Abby, yeah. This is honestly, this is the thing, right? And, yeah. And, and you serve a very important role, and uh, I want you to continue serving that role. I have no <laughs> objection. He's like, we need a Spaniard in the family. I have no objection to you. No, it's like, you know, if 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 I'm slacking, right, in any facet of life. Not only for me, but f- for also Amanda, I want you to keep me in check. Well, okay. so here's, feel me? here's what I'm going to say to that as feel an outsider it. in the situation. Well, you, you, uh, you both kind of lost a father figure in this, right? Big time. And I'm not saying that you guys need to be father figures for each other, but you also have to be just like very supportive of each other as two men that are now a part of this family going forward, like period. Right. So, again, uh, to... Uh, what's making me sad is what like Leandro was saying that like if he's getting out of line you kind of have to tell but him how do I do that you can be honest with me but I then mean, I feel like a dickhead no 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 no. listen dickhead. listen you, cause <laughs> I know I am <laughs> there's ways where Abby presents things and it's like sort of dicky you yes, know what I mean yeah 100% no, absolutely like don't just shit on me like oh you fucking up motherfucker but like like today with the whole sticker thing you brought it up perfectly fine you know what I mean okay with the design or whatever and that's it you know uh, you know, I honestly, honestly about that situation, I didn't think it was that serious. If it was, if it was like, c- it like wasn't contract, that serious. I, I think, done it. I think, yeah, yeah, that doesn't matter. I, I think though, you, similar to my father-in-law though, that attack each, and I don't do it well. I'm, I've been working on it my whole life. Is attack the micro, po- like Jack knows, throughout the 14 years that I'm always thinking like 10 years down the road. And have a problem compartmentalizing today. Mm. My father-in-law was great at compartmentalizing today and grabbing today, excuse my French, by the nutsack. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't think you did that in the last 24 hours, and I think you could have done that. So that's 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 where it comes into that. And I think to grow this, to grow this podcast, to grow it to a legacy that Brett would be proud of, um, because I think ultimately, like, he wanted to be a star. Yeah. Like, he had, let's go back 40 minutes ago, he had main character energy. He was the singer. He was the entertainer. He, he always was, wanted to go viral. He would have gone, he would have gotten on this podcast and just, like, shitted on both of you, like, yeah. endlessly, but in the funniest way possible. Not like, and we'd end up loving him. Not, like, like increasingly <laughs> rude, but just being like, oh, Abby, you fucking fat fuck. You have, like, Zach Wilson, you're probably gay for him. Oh, yeah, well, no. Yeah. <laughs> he would have dropped the gay, and though. I, and I mean, probably gay for Zach Wilson. As this podcast goes on, you'll understand me better. I mean, I there's, a, there's a lot of things that, like, I mean. I'm worried about that. The, 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 the <laughs> biggest issue is this, and Jack can confirm it. If I'm on a serious note, stay on that road, because it's going to lead to somewhere good. If you just come in out of nowhere and I start saying something serious, and you come out of nowhere like, uh, uh, I saw a bull that had three dicks. And then Do you, you know Helder Rodriguez got bit by an Asian chick? See, <laughs> exactly. So it's like you just... Oh, why do you're not gonna get to know me? Because then yeah. I'm gonna just I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna no. fuck, like 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 I was saying though. Like I think you guys just need to as much as you need to be there for like your significant others. I think it's good, especially with the relationship that we've built with you've built with each other now, and then like obviously me in the mix as well. Um, being there for each other just as much as you would be there for Kayla, Amanda, um, 
and your significant Leah. others. No, I wasn't gonna say Leah. Oh. I like in my head, I like wanted to say and your significant others, but I just named your significant yeah. others. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're running on like forty-two minutes, so we probably should wrap One it up. Um, Let's wrap it up. What do you want? How do you want to wrap this up? I just want all our users to know that I really love this dude. You know, not a, like a like a father. I loved him like a father. You know, he really embraced me. And uh, he was a special dude to me, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know if I can stomach ever really going to the cemetery to visit him, but I want him to know if he's in any capacity watching us right now that he was special to me, you know what I mean? Like, very special dude. Uh, I wish we had more time, but I really appreciate the, the time that I did have with him living in his house and understanding the dude a little bit more, you know? So words for him were s were tough for me to even write down. I, I was tasked with giving a eulogy uh, at his actual funeral, and I normally obviously don't stop fucking talking. Um, and when I went to write down his eulogy, I really struggled with it. It was something when I was flying home from Austin after finding, about, finding out about his death, uh, that I was kind of like jotting down notes and trying to think of how I would eul eulogize a man larger than life, larger in my life. Um, ultimately, I know that's very cliche, but there are no words for this situation. I think we've encompassed a decent amount in these last 43 minutes to the man he was, but we will never do him specific justice. Uh, I loved him like a father. I was very blessed in my life that I not only had a good father, I had a good grandfathers, um, I had a good stepfather, and I had a good father-in-law. Sorry, Kayla's stepfather. So I've the men in my life have always been like the pinnacle of perfection, and it's always given me an insecurity that I can't live up to th that person. Um, what I want him to know is I don't know if I necessarily got to tell him while I was alive, um, that I was always excited to see his face. I was always excited to hear his voice. And there was no part of the last 14 years that my phone ever rang or my text ever went off that I sighed and wasn't excited for the next moment with him. And unfortunately, now that I don't get that next moment, it really does hurt me. I, I don't know how I'm going to be able to deal with the moments... Um, upcoming, whether it be Father's Day, where this episode's airing, uh, the first Jets game that airs this year without Brett, or the birth of my future child. Um, I don't have any further words. I just want him to know, like Leandro said to him, that I will love him forever. I will do whatever I can do to honor his legacy with his daughters. I will try to protect them. And he made the world a better place when he was in it. So hopefully, whenever I meet my untimely death, people can say the same thing about me that they said about my father-in-law. And that's the only legacy that I can embody for him. Mm -hmm. Love you, Mr. T. Love you, buddy. Be real.